So we're going to go through the Spring Data project and uh, understand the basic concept of Spring Data and Spring Data GP. So what is the Spring Data project? Spring Data project is allow us to create and connect with different kind of data store, be it uh, SQL or NoSQL databases. Okay, and then on SQL databases, it support JPA, it support JOQ. And it also support SQL statement as it is with uh, Spring Data JDBC. And NoSQL, it's also support MongoDB, Cassandra, and other databases too. So normally, when we uh, have a representative query in SQL, it looks like simple select statement from a particular employee table where you have a first table like something else, right? So that query when that translated into the jpa it becomes select e where e is the employee object including all the fields properties of that employee object then, then the first name is the property name and the name is the parameter name now joq is another uh, library that can be used so here it has been a kind of a use a particular builder kind of a pattern Fluent API, which is used to create a particular query. So here it creates a query, it performs the select from a particular relationship where the particular field EQ has a name and the fetch. So it's uh, similar to whatever we find in a criteria query. In NoSQL, what we have is uh, if we correspondingly write that into the MongoDB kind of a format, you start with DB, then followed by the particular collection name right employee then it has like a find and the first name is equal to whatever name you submit there or you can also use the match where it try to match those employees where the employee first name is equal to something or it include query and match together with the first name is something else so different way it can query this so now the Spring Data normally gives us the repository, which are basically interface. So the, only the interface or abstraction it's provide. And depending on the library or the dependency you take, it creates the implementation on its own. So the same interface of Spring Data, like here you are finding by first name, of the employee object list of employee object with passing the first name can be similarly used again jpa jdbc redis neo4j r2pc which is reactive jdbc mongodb then you can also use them against apache geot apache cassandra elastic search and also ugabyte db and couchbase cosmos database and AgnoDB. So different kind of databases, but one simple kind of a abstraction that is repository interface and their interface abstract method, etc. Depending on that queries and etc. are being generated by the dependent library. So we're going to be using Spring Data JPA. Then it will create the JPQL queries, as mean data, JDBC, it create the SQL statement for this. So it is basically consistent across different uh, repository or different state that you are storing. Okay. Normally, previously, if we wanted to build certain thing, what we have to do, we have to then write the uh, database specific languages, right? There is all the different databases having different clients. So if you need to implement the client library and write the corresponding data layout, right? There is no simple API that you can use against them. There is no silver bullet. There is no magic that is there. So what is the Spring Data does implement this? 
misunderstand the anatomy of the spring database. <coughs> Data repository project. <coughs> so the topmost abstraction that where you don't have to deal with any database specific idioms or construction is the repository interface. Like the example you have seen, list of employee find by the first name. And the default implementation of that is comes from the library that you select. Now in a low, lower level, if you want to use the manage the transaction, etc., you have the two options. Either you can use the different template, JDBC template, MongoDB template, etc. When you wanted to do your own customization or have a control on that particular query, how you want to build it, which is not possible via the repository interface, then you can either choose Entity Manager or Template API. Okay. The other two things is basically mapping of your POJOs to your store format, be it collection, be it table, etc. Whatever your native store format, table to your POJO mapping, domain object mapping, or MongoDB collection to your domain object mapping. So that mapping is generally represented by, as you know, via different annotation. Then the type conversion. How are we going to be converting enum to a stream or a timestamp, date time timestamp to the data stream, that date time stream that is taken care of. And at the end is basically the database driver. So those are the basic construct of this big data project. Where? Below implementation, template API, mapping, conversion, and the driver are you know bring in by the Spring Data JPA, Spring Data JTBC, Spring Data MongoDB, etc. Those kind of your data store specific libraries. Now, what is the template API? For example, here template API. It actually works a little bit low level. So what is taking? It's going to be implementing Mongo operations for your Mongo template. And then from the Mongo template, it takes queries. It can find one row, list of rows, find and remove, and other different methods are there. And also the entity classes. And using the query, you can do varies, etc. Similarly, you have a generic execute method, which you can also use. And here you can actually use the native driver and the command that you are currently using. So here you are using collection, find, you are creating a new document, and you are converting into an new error list so that's basically one level down compared to your database repository if you require additional customization that is there in case of repositories it's uh, predefined methods as we know already they are save remove and other method find all these methods are there called those methods are coming by default when you implement or extend your corresponding JDBC, uh, JDBC repository or MongoDB repository. Now here you can have different query method, like here is finding by first name. So all the finder methods is there or other queries you can have integrate that. And also under code repositories, you have save, delete, count, find by ID, find by all. And also you have paging and sorting repository where you can patch, page, or sort to pagination them. And then underneath that, this interface is basically a proxy 
where the actual implementation is come, store specific implementation is provided. Where the git and uh, Spring data library that is provided. Now we know that uh, these queries are actually derived. They are derived by first name. What is basically how the query is actually formed at the runtime. So first of all, it comes your return type. Return type is what? It's a list of employees. Then find. So it's a operation that you're doing find. Then you say finding by matching argument or the property or the field name that the Pojo has. So you are having like a first name. Then what is the binding argument? That is the matching argument or name argument it becomes and binding argument it creates. So based on this, your query get created. <laughs> Similarly for paging and sorting, uh, instead of having a list, you have like page written. And per invocation, you get a new set of page. And in the pageable, you pass what is the number of rows that you wanted to fill, which number of page you wanted to fetch, and the parameter. If you wanted to continuously you wanted to have the value, you can use the stream method that is there. Now, did I fetch query? So here, how it is been figured out. So on the left-hand side, your return type, you can have a single employee. You have page, you have stream, you have slice of employee. Then you have find. You can also use uh, any kind of query, query, search, stream, get, read, etc. Then, then a uh, placeholder, what you will write, find employee by definite delimiter is separating out. What is separating out from first name? So this becomes your binding property, like that is the matching operator. Order by coming after that, sort direction ascending or descending, and the field by which you are ordering that. Apart from like, what else you can use? You can use start with, ends with, is null, is empty, is not null, before, after for date, greater than, less than, contains, matches, like that. So different kind of match operators are also there. Similarly, you can have like a crown operation also can be there. So here you have count employees by first name like. So if the name is like that, how many objects are there? Similarly, you can normally we need to do also like count and then we check whether the count is greater than is equal to zero or it is not. Then we say it is exist. Instead of that, you can purely use exist employee by first name like. So there you can basically count and return you a value to if the count is. Get to the one. Similarly, you can have a, like a derive query. So, in case of derive, delete statement, you can say you are modifying that. Okay, that annotation you're going to use. Similarly, which object you wanted to delete? If you wanted to say, I, wanted to get the list of objects that I have deleted. So you can have the list of employees, or if you don't want to have that object that is deleted to be written, you can have a void, or you can have a long that represent how many records has been actually deleted. You can use either delete or remove employee, then by first name like some 
matching argument and correspondingly delete form table okay where first name like your string name that kind of a query get created so so we 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 also find this very uh, helpful when using with id uh, where you can find all the default methods around the methods are also supported to create different type of query it will automatically suggest so it will suggest not only the default internal method that the uh, interfaces has also it can suggest the method by which you can query or update a delete operation you can do similarly if you have given a name that is not correct so at the runtime you get a exception that whatever name you have provided it failed to translate into the sql statement so for example you have used a first name that is not found so that will be indicated so you can fix the with the actual name of the property now data projection what do you mean by data projection now normally what do you do when you fetching the query we are getting the whole employee out Sometimes what we need to do is sometimes we don't need to get the all the employee object. We require part of the employee object or details that we require. So in that case, you can create a separate interface or a separate class. Okay. And in that interface, you mention which are the properties you require. So that will create a particular specific definition and you can choose like a view one view two view three so automatically out of the properties that are there it will map to this new interface create an object or class and return it like here you can see the view list is expected now here you can also choose to map the name for example here you are getting first name and last name but you need to return the full name so in that case what you can do you can create a, a sql expression where you can combine the first name and last name together using the added value annotation and it will be mapped to the particular first name and last name into a name field And now also there is like a query by example. So query by example is what? Here you have can choose, instead of passing a particular employee, you can pass example of type of an employee. Okay. So here you are again choosing page, stream, long, etc. Either you're using find or good, or find by or something else. And here, instead of that, what you are passing is actually the employee object. So it is very useful. So instead of you know passing all the different kind of combination of parameters, you can pass all the parameter value into a single object, and that particular object, whatever you know field value has been put there, based on which it try to map. And based on that particular mapping, it will return. Here you can also use the pageable and sortable examples. Okay. Now we know about auditing. There are four fields we normally uh, add is created by who, and uh, then you have like updated by updated date, created by and created date. So those things can be automatically populated. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to look into any high uh, lifecycle method, like P persist or those kind of thing. What you can do, we can simply use last modified date or created date, last updated by or created by kind of a field. And thereby we can store those details instead of 
you know, overloading any kind of life cycle event and setting those values. And similarly, these things can also be used with Spring Reactive. Like if you have like a multiple field values, like a list, you can use box. If you are using a single object you are expecting, you can use Momo. And there is rest of the things remain the same. OK. Now, storage engine is what? Storage engine is basically nothing but your how the data is represented into your databases. So here is the two example. One is the basically a table. Another is basically a document in MongoDB. So in this table, what you have is you have two tables, employee and a manager. So in the employee table, you have employee details. And the manager is a link to a foreign table. So you can represent the structure. Manager has a list of employees. Or you can also have represented this employee as a manager, which is there. Now here, in case of MongoDB, it can be a embedded by default when you are persisting that. So in the your managers can have a employee object inside that, even like a single employee, or employee object can have like a single manager that's there. Okay. So how are we going to be mapping them? So you know the mapping is basically done by the annotation. Here you have the entity, you have classes employee, you have ID and related value either by sequence, and then you have the different column names which have been mapped, table column name which have been mapped to the field name. Now this same thing if you wanted to do with the MongoDB, then you have to do like a document, then you have to do ID and the field name is a first name that you have out here. Now, how the MongoDB linking actually works? So here, simple uh, format that you can you choose. For example, you are creating manager. So if you wanted to link to the list of employees, so you basically use database ref okay so database ref actually stores the reference of that particular employee using dbf what is that field id is the id is the field of that underscore id field that is there in your employee collection and what kind of collection reference you are referring to, you are referring to the employees. Similarly, on the employee class, on the, your domain object, you mentioned that it's a document reference, and it is referred to the manager. So manager is being referred to by 1,000 to your 1,000 means the identity ID that is being linked to this. So you can represent that as a dbref, or you can represent them as a document reference. dbref is additionally stores the collection name along with the ID. Rather, here your document reference contain the collection name and the value directly. In case of a JPA, right, you have like a embedding, right? So what going to happen is here you going to be storing the manager and those manager level class details are actually stored addition columns into the same table apart from the first name last name id etc that been stored with the employees and here you can use the attribute override to change the your column names if they are different from the manager main David definition. 
Now let's cook it to 20. Okay. So now you have the option of calling store procedures, right? So how you can you know call the store procedure? You can use the annotation at the rate procedure and you can call that particular function name employee increase salary. So increase salary, you pass the whatever you know input value that you need to pass and the output value is comes over here. Now MongoDB has a separate GeoSQL query. Okay. But we don't use much. So here you basically figure out the distance, max distance between a point. So find by office location near a certain point has been given. And that result is GeoSQL query with you. Along with this, what you can do, you can also use um, native queries. So for example, here the example is given. If you wanted to use your own native query, you can do that. For example, here you are counting E and also you are fetching M. And also you are fetching from manager joining with the employees and you are grouping them by e name so that's custom query may be better you know represented with the native query so you can represent the native query and similarly it cannot be directly mapped to your employee object because it has an additional count that is there so your manager object because it has the addition count for employees so you can create a new view which is a class or interface and you can put the map so here you can have that similarly in case of a mongodb if you wanted to execute your own aggregation query so you can have your aggregation that is there where you are projecting the id name and the size in employees that is, you're going to pick it up. And here you are choosing the view to represent the same data. So we know this is like a, like a default implementation repositories, etc. that you have gone through. Okay. Now, here is an option that you can create. You have like repository, card repository, paging and sorting repository. Similarly, you can have create your own repositories, uh, interfaces with your own set of method, which can be further indicated and they can be further implemented. Okay, how can we do the troubleshooting? You can look into the log file, you can look into the query explanation, you can look into the network stack, and you can look into the metrics. So, so far, any question on the basic uh, MongoDB code, MongoDB concept, sorry, Spring data concept? Okay. If not, then you move to the second slide and some example. Here we're going to look into the Spring Data GP. So it basically talks about how we can, you know, make it our Spring Data JPA query fast and scalable. So basically, performance is an important thing when you are using JPA queries or any other thing. 
here you need to focus on to finding that if your queries have any kind of problems and try to figure it that early and then fixing them. So for doing that, you need to see what kind of queries you're generating because here you are not in control of generating queries. It has been done by the default implementation library. Generally, mostly we use the personal provider as a hibernate. Let's see what are the best practices we can follow and how we can avoid different pitfalls that are there. Identify issue. How we can identify the issue? So we can activate statistics detail about how much time it takes to generate those queries. Execute those queries, etc. We can enable the properties hibernate dot generate statistics. Similarly, if you wanted to know about the hibernate logs or stat logs, you can turn on the debug level on those so you can get additional log detail. Apart from that. What you can do, we can configure to log slow queries. Which queries are taking more time? OK. So here you can put Hibernate session event log, log queries, slow the milliseconds. So basically, if you are expecting the queries to be returning the record within, say, 700 milliseconds or something, then you can set the threshold value. And any query that exceeds that particular threshold value, you can print it out. And other thing you can obviously enable is that you can print out the query log. So that will let you know which query been actually been logged and what is the query parameter is being used. Now, one of the major problem comes from the association fetching. Association, we know, one to one, many to many, one to many, etc. So normally, how we map, depending on that, they say queries are created. Now, how you can you know control that queries that have been created? And how can it ensure those association fetch are not taking more time? That should be here. Yeah. And how we can you know optimize this association fetch? We know about the fetch type, right? So here, many to one. So by default, many to one, the fetch type out here is lazy, right? Now you can choose different other option. Like another one we know is eager. So what is this? I think we know that lazy means the relationship part of it. So for example, we see the previous example of managers and employee. If the employee has been accessed for the first time, then the query gets sent and the, all the employees are fetched. Okay, and this is by default for many side of the relationship. Eager part is very simple. At the time when you are query the main object 
whatever the associated objects are page along with this and it is the default page type when you have one side of the relationship so what is the recommendation so too many kind of relationship we need to stick with the default mapping okay only use eager fetching when it is absolute necessary okay okay and for one type you see whether you require this data or else you can change them the new association you can change them to lazy type if you don't require it so that means you are fetching less amount of data you are not actually using the association type in your code base and when either we are creating the queries okay the most common problem we know is the n plus query so what is the n plus select if so we have a manager And like here, we can see the author. It's been selected. It's the author class and the query being executed, right? And here, we have looping to that particular author. An author has books, one or many books that they are authored, right? Now, even if we put it's a lazy, right? Um, we are accessing it for the first time. So what happened is you have to have like 10 authors. Then for each author, when you call the get book, it basically execute 10 more queries. That is the most common problem we see. You have encountered this. So instead of that, you can choose the other join type where you are fetching all the data in a single query at only once. So instead of lazy, you can choose fetch join or entity graph. Okay. Now comes to many to many relationship. So here, when you are using many to many, always recommended to use set instead of list. Because when you are using list, you are removing something. OK. Or if doing any manipulation, we perform multiple operation. It removes all the association. And again, it recreate the remaining association. So for example, I wanted to delete one association. So it's going to be remove all the association and then it's going to be at the remaining one, right? So also we find that we have implemented something similar to this. Like for example, when you need to delete one record, what do we do? We fetch the list. We remove all the records, then we find what are the elements are there remaining. We again insert that. That is create many queries in efficient. So instead of that, use set. In case of a projection, either you choose the whole entity or you choose a particular TTO, be it class base, be it interface base, or you wanted to only get the one single scalar value. Okay, those kind of projections normally we do. So here, in case of a DTO projection, always choose a DTO class or the interface. 
and the Spring Data JPA will create the corresponding implementing class that is there. And there you also can choose to perform one-to-one -one mapping or expression-based mapping as well with the value annotation. That one kind of projection you can use. Advanced DTO projection, one is the Spring expression language, is the nested association. That is another thing that you can look into. Now, other thing is caching. <laughs> we know about the caching. By default, comes with Hibernate. We know the two level of cache. So this is, you guys already know, right? Query cache, second level of cache, first level of cache, etc. So that Okay. Second level of cache, what is need to be there? So it is whatever your entity is stored, means your database store, irrespective of it is session, which is independent of your entity store. It we know that we need to activate that with the application properties. It is a transparent view, so we don't have to do anything explicitly. And persistency provider does not need to provide it. It is not mandatory. Okay. Now, when you're caching, again, you have a different object. You can choose to cache all entities. You choose to cache no entities. You enable or disable selective caching, or you specified the unspecified caching operation. So those different properties you can choose to choose whatever you know single level cache you want to be enable or disable. So after seeing this, let us look into some of the code base and then we can discuss some questions. Okay, let me just see. Spring Cloud, Spring Data. Need to be here where it goes. This one is not showing. So as the project load up, any questions on this? Okay. Let's look into the domain object first. Okay. Here you have a basic domain object is the chess player. And uh, here you make this entity cacheable. A name entity graph we have also added. 
the graph is chess player tournament and what are the attributes from that particular graph you are taking is the tournament attribute next the id generation is simply you are generating based on a sequence and sequence generator you have mentioned what is the sequence name what is the by default sequence name this is a db sequence name what is should be the initial and then you don't have to define the fields if it is there now chess player is related to one to many relationship where he has started the games with the white piece and other which is a black piece now here is one of the tips that they have mentioned is that don't use page type eagle when you have the many to many relationship and also another point is that you are using set not list okay and cast a concurrency you have to make it transactional you can also use the versions that are there and the data and setters the chase game is another okay it's sequence based but it's not mentioned anything similarly many to one chess tournament it's a part of and the chess player it is a part of all are being marked as a lazy to load now coming chase tournament here again it is cacheable so only two entities are cacheable chase tournament and the chess player now here you have one relationship many to many so again here they have used set and also set to many <coughs> they are using set instead of list now here there are some projections are there like player name first name last name constructor and get a setter other thing is that same thing being implemented as a interface tournament also as an interface where you have the gate name and the player name interface where is showing the nested mapping and better player name which is get first name last name interface space where you are basically creating a default function instead of using any expression you just returning the value and player full name is where you are using the spring expression where you are using target not last name and target dot first name separated by a comma but it is better to use another method for this so these are the basically the main classes that are there now in the repositories what we have <coughs> Now here the important point out here is that here you are finding by tournament, right? So what is the query is actually going to generate? It generating chase player from the chase player because on the chase player basically we have defined the particular graph that it is linked with the tournaments and from the yeah. tournament object itself tournament is, is, so here it is tournaments which is using entity graph it's fetching the value which is converting into a left chart find dto by first name right here the player name is acting as a DTO. Okay, but these two fields are automatically mapped. That is the projection we are seeing. The next example is interface based mapping or projection. Okay. Third example is how can we use the native query? So what they are doing, selecting first name and last name, they are converting into the fields, right? And from the chess player where the chess player first name is something like this and it is a native query too and with the as alias they are able to fetch this convert things into the dto projection interface 
Similar example, they have given with the native example where they are using non interface DTO. Now here you are fetching the full name or the better full name. Other projections has been shown out here. So here the full name int where the regular expression will be used. Uh, sorry, not regular expression is the SP spring expression language has been used and the first name last name is combined and here the default method is used normal mapping is there and default method is used now if we look into the tournament repository it just has find my name and tournament so we have seen all the different examples that they have talked about and jp repositories both cases has been used and application is simply nothing more out here and controller classes they have just by id request path player by find repo and then if it is present is optional you can use by default also find by id that is by default optional no result exception etc now out here Simple application name, database name, postcase name, username, password, DDL create to auto generated, dialect you choosing, SQL you're going to be formatting show, context creation, non contextual creation is true, point performance issue. So, performance issues again, you are enabling statistics and enabling debug log on the statistics. SQL debug log, log all statistics, you are enabling that slow query performance which are taking more than three milliseconds you are printing them out and you are enable caching selectively so whatever you chosen as a caching selectively whichever object you have mapped at the rate annotation so not everything going to be cached only out here the chase player will be cached and your chase tournament will be Yes, I assume, but not your chase game is caching. So all this configuration is whatever they have discussed are listed out. So any questions? How to optimize SQL statements? How to avoid or debug early about performance bottleneck. Hello. Yes, sir. Any questions you guys have? No, sir. Till now, no. Okay, let me pause the presentation and stop the recording. Okay. Uh, 